Hey, Andre, what are you eating, dude? This is really good brisket. Yeah. Amazing. We're in Michigan. I think they do barbecue here really, really well. Yeah, people think of Texas, but I think Michigan has some great barbecue, but we're not here for that. We're here for that. And this barbecue has been made using electricity energy from the new Silverado EV truck. That's right, we're here with uh, GM on a program and we're driving uh, the Silverado EV, but it does more than just the usual truck things, mm. right? Mm. That's so good, isn't it, Andre? So tell me, what are we doing? How are we powering these trucks? So this concept is really not brand new, right? Yes. But all electric vehicles are really batteries on wheels, right? You have a giant energy storage, like in this truck. By the way, this truck, this work truck, 2024 Chevy Silverado EV WT, has so much energy, it's capable of driving up to 450 miles on a single charge. All right, well, let's be honest here. They haven't disclosed how big the battery is, but we're guessing it's about the same size as a Hummer EV, which is about 212 yes. kilowatt hours usable. But yes. tell me more, how is it powering this food truck and that food truck? Yes, so two food trucks in one. All right. So first of all, you have this, which is outlets in the bed. So this is up to 7.2 kilowatts. So the truck has this onboard power system. You can see the green light right now. Uh, this is obviously 240 volt or 220 volt and this cable is running over to this taco truck right yeah but that's not all that's not all they have a new accessory that will be they'll be selling this so, year so, so normally you think this truck is charging but it's not no it's actually outputting okay so the power is coming from here all the way down And this is an accessory that GM will be selling. It has the Ultium brand, which is their brand. This is a prototype, uh, but this is, shows what's possible uh, to power something wonderful like this. So um, does the truck actually let you know how much power is being drawn? I'm glad you asked that. Do you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah I'll you, you jump in the okay. driver, I'll jump in the passenger truck. And by the way, passenger truck, passenger, this is the work truck. And by the way, if you're curious as to what it looks like, there it is. A work truck. All right, so let's see if we know how much power we're drawing using nothing but the truck to power two food trucks. Oh, yes. Five. So there is a outlet in the front front area. There is an outlet in here by the console. There is an outlet in the bed. And this is what this represents, 7.2 kilowatts. And you see we're using something like 20%. I wish GM would put a number on this. Yes, well, there's, you know, there's a number there, which is the state of the battery. Yeah, so this is the current state of charge of this vehicle. And they also define the limit. So when the energy goes down to 20%, the power will be cut off to other accessories, like the cooking trucks, uh, the food trucks, so you can drive home, basically. And we did ask, because I was curious, and they said as long as the truck is on, there's power going to both of those outlets. Oh, you well, can't, uh, not the one no. where you're plugged in, but the one in the back in the bed, right? Exactly. So you can you can use the 7.2 kilowatt system while moving. Yeah, and that's important because of the next thing we're about to show you. So, um, so this is cool. Yeah. So it shows you when you know what the status is. Uh, you can define your own you know, percentage, um, and it says right now we use 19 miles of range to cook dinner for like 30 people. Two, which is impressive two food trucks so let's go uh, look over here and i think andre most people don't quite understand just how much power hey dude hold on let's get let's get hey, hey kyle, kyle about sorry i'm reviews. just eating food here so let me <laughs> Thank you, thank so, you. So what do you think of this onboard power? Well, actually pretty interesting. Let me drop this here and I can share my impressions of it because... First of all, impressions of the brisket. <laughs> oh, brisket somehow. Okay, so I was just talking to them about the brisket. Yeah. Award winning all the way down to Florida, up here to Michigan. They go wow. all over. Okay. So I thought it was pretty good. What'd you no, think? No, yes, good. Yeah. <laughs> now the truck. Yeah, okay, the important stuff. So they went with the Ford solution, which is a 30 amp output, 240 volt. Yes. I think what would have been more useful would be to go with a 50 amp NEMA 1450. Up the uh, conversion power a little bit, because every electric car has a NEMA 1450 for the most part, every RV buddy plug. 
maybe at least put a TT30 like they did on this thing. Yeah, right But there. no one carries this plug type on there. That was my issue with the Lightning, and here we see it again. So maybe there's some other region as to why. I, I remember buying a lot of adapters mm. when we had the Lightning. Yes. So you could do that, right? And then like the string of adapters <laughs> to figure out like, okay, let me buy everything. Because you never know what it is. <laughs> and so that's interesting. But even more interesting is what's going on over here with the J1772 output yes. of power. So they claim 10 point something kilowatts out through here. No, no, up to three. Oh, they claim three here. Uh, because combined, 7.2 ah, plus this three. This makes so much more sense. See? Thank you. Up to three here. So that is why they selected this unit over here with the 30 amp, 120 yes. volt connection. Thank yeah. you, Andre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I thought was interesting about this solution was um, they have a really quite thin cable, which is fine, but a long run. Very different than Hyundai Kia, that's which like, makes you... That's like 25 feet. It's more than enough mm, for yeah, anything. Yeah. And and so, you know, when you look at Hyundai Kia's V to L situation, it's, you know, you plug it in and then you got the, the 120 volt outlet right there. This is so much cooler than that. Well, thank you, Kyle. We're yeah, of course. Ahead. No, no, thanks. So we're walking yeah, around. Thanks. Crash your video. No, no, thanks. we love, we love having you, dude. And, uh... Obviously, if you want more of Kyle, you know where to go. Out of spec. Out of spec. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Thanks, dude. All right, so uh, let's go show them what um, what else they have. Yeah, you can, you and I will drop this off on my table. You love it so much. You Sorry. Don't want to put it down. Sorry about that. By the way, the tacos were also good. I know. You had the taco, right? Yeah, I had the tacos. So uh, let's walk through the little barn here and uh, head on out and look at some other trucks. Because, like I was saying, the cool thing that you can do, obviously, is when you're Let's go this way, Andre. When you're driving and you're you know, going to the work site, let's say, and you've forgotten to power or charge your tools at night, you could do it in the bed of your truck while you're driving to the work site, right? Yeah. So they've got a very nice little setup here showing you, you know, all the different things you could do. Uh, so, you know, radio, drill, once again, uh, there is a little... Uh, Their output box? Yeah. Yep. Kyle said V to L, vehicle to load, right? That's what Hyundai calls yeah. them. They have tool outlets. So we did another video, Roman, and I got one number wrong in another video. Okay, what was that? I said this bed was just over six feet long. Five foot 11. It's 5 foot 11, I was wrong. But you, this is a four by eight sheet of plywood. Look at this. So the four by eight fits in between the wheel wells. Obviously, this is a full size truck. And the eight foot here is to the tailgate. So this is pretty nice. By the way, Andrea, we're in the golden hour here as the sun is setting and you are lit beautifully. <laughs> you are like a model. Okay. Do you want to be on camera too? Yeah, sure. Let me, let okay. me get a camera. Uh, just why don't you show them that truck? Because yeah. that truck is very interesting. So obviously um, what Chevy is doing is uh, they're coming out with the work truck first. Watch out for the wood. I see it. Thank you, Andre. Uh, as opposed to the consumer truck, uh, which is an interesting way of rolling out a vehicle. It may have to do with the price because uh, this... Uh, Work truck, the, the 4WT, right? Yeah. Uh, is going to be around $78,000? To start, yes. To start. It's a lot. And so maybe maybe the pain is being offset that it's being sold to fleet customers. But, uh, you know, they're trying to add a lot of accessories. So obviously we've got a frunk. It's a little bit smaller than the Ford Lightning frunk, right? Yeah. This is 10.6 cubic feet. What's a Ford? About 14. So about yeah. 50% smaller. Uh, but you've got this nice little divider here. And by uh, the way, here's the plug we discussed. Yeah. Right, this is this is part of it. Sorry to make a loud noise, but that's the plug. Yeah, so you've got that there. Uh, and then back here, you've got an optional under seat uh, storage area, which I think is also very useful. I love this. I had something similar in my truck when I had my F-150. So things don't roll around, right? Yeah. This is really important. And they also created giant door openings, right? Oh, I know. Humongous. Those are, those are just, you could get a baby elephant in there, Andre. Seriously, they're that big. And over here, of course, we've got one of these uh, for our rooftop tent, but here it's integrated nicely into uh, the top of the rail so that you don't have to necessarily attach it to the side. Uh, and here's two questionable things that I don't understand. Yeah. So the work truck just gets a regular tailgate, right? Dampened, of course. Uh, but yeah, but not a multi-folding one. Yeah, if you want the multi-folding one, you're going to have to go with the uh, RST version, which is over there, which we'll go look at as well. And by the way, guys, we did videos on all this, so go to all TFL. Here we're just kind of concentrating on the accessories and what you can do with the truck. But yeah, this is cool. I mean, obviously they got a ladder here. You could put a rooftop tent. A lot of cool kind of features. Yeah, I'm really glad that they're also thinking about accessorizing, including, you know, the little mud flaps. That's yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 
you know, we were talking with uh, the designer and he said that they worked really hard, unlike the Hummer EV, to get a low coefficient of drag. And he wouldn't tell me what that is, but to get 450 miles of range out of, let's say, a 212, 213 usable kilowatt hour battery is not easy. Uh, and so this is interesting, Andre, this kind of flying buttress like uh, feature, right? So there's no space like a traditional uh, pickup truck would have, obviously, a space. Like a cut line, yeah, right? Yeah. But they don't have it. Uh, and they have this flying buttress, and he said that, that really improves uh, uh, the range because it increases the truck's aerodynamic uh, coefficient of range. Coefficient of, yeah. Well, it decreases the drag, exactly, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a big controversy, Roman, because people are saying, is this a unibody truck? Is this body on the frame? Well, it still has that kind of the skateboard chassis, right? Yeah. It still has the battery chassis with independent rear suspension in front and two motors front and back, so it's four-wheel drive. And... Uh, the work truck has up to about 510 horsepower and 615 pound-feet of torque and really kind of one gear experience, right? There's not a multi-speed transmission, but so, look at this. I know, so I took the ca camera so that you can talk about your favorite thing, which is towing on uh, Oh, this is a big trailer. Uh, at one point, GM said that this would tow up to 20,000 pounds. Uh, but they yet. haven't showed that to us yet. No, now we're talking about 10,000 pound max. So this is interesting. So this does not have air suspension. The mm -hmm. work truck does not. Um, but there's not a lot of squat, Roman. So when I come up to this truck and I take a look at it, they're using this adjustable hitch. This is a pretty large trailer. And they say, I haven't weighed this, but they say this represents about 10,000 pounds, which is the current rating of this truck. By the way, the truck itself weighs about 8,500 pounds. Yeah, you're right. There's not a lot of squat, is there? Look how long that is. I mean, look at that. That is just such a long truck. But the funny thing is, I was looking at the data. The wheelbase is about the same as a standard Silverado. Yeah. So 145.5 inches, let's say. So, so I think it's a visual illusion also because of this. Kind of extends well, it. How long has it been on a standard uh, Silverado? It's either like a 510. So it's one and there's also more. six and a half. So this is somewhere in between. Are you okay if we go up to the truck? What do you think? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. It's a 511 bench, from what I heard. Yes. Yeah, yes. we were talking about the uh, gasoline version too. Yeah. Oh. One inch, one inch less. Anyways, this is the RST. So this is coming later. Uh, the work truck is available now, uh, and this we don't know the price, uh, but we're expecting it to be at least 105, maybe as much as 115,000, depending uh, on options. But the cool part here, Andre, you wanna you wanna jump in or you want me to jump in? Are you feeling? Like your are acrobatic, you want to, yeah, sure. want to show but what's cool? I don't it? have to be acrobatic. Look at this, look at this tailgate. I can make but, it easier. But there's also a step right there. I, I, I don't want to use that right no, now. Use a step. All right, jump in. And then here's the cool part here. Look at that. By the way, this is a prototype. Yeah. If I break this, um, somebody- it, Andre, 115,000. Somebody at General Motors will be very upset. <laughs> So this is what is in the industry known as the mid-gate that Andre is luxuriating through. Ah. Uh, and it actually works in a very clever way. So you can take the window out like you did now, basically, right. and have an entire uh, added length. Basically, the back seat falls down and you've yeah. got all this. Or you can leave the window in and then this part falls down if you want to put like two by fours or, you know, some longer and, lumber. And also it's 40-60 split, right? So you can have a person sitting or not sitting. Wow. So this is cool. Yeah, the mid-gate. But that does beg one giant question. Yes. Why is this gate and this tailgate, so mid-gate and tailgate, not on the work truck? I don't know. I think they're trying to make that more affordable. Yeah. But that's what us working people want. Right. right? This, this is the ultimate in, like, usability for hauling stuff because look at the look at the length of that space Andre it's enormous yeah now this so, is, of course has been done before in the avalanche right so right so they're kind of tapping into their history a little bit yeah. uh, with this vehicle and then want to show them the inside in interior is very nice yeah so the work truck if you saw it it's a little bit more basic a vinyl uh, seats floor here you have something that is also unusual uh, to this one and that is of course uh, Super Cruise, right? So this Silverado first edition RST has Super Cruise, which is nice. Much nicer display, much nicer seats, obviously leather steering wheel. And even the dash and stitching, everything is just stepped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I mean, 
little bit of color in the vents here. And of course, that. Panoramic roof. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can obviously tell that uh, Chevy, in this case, is definitely gunning for Ford. I know a lot of you out there might be thinking, what about the Rivian? Well, the Rivian is obviously, you know, more of a midsize truck or kind of a tweener truck, but these guys are definitely going after Ford, wouldn't you say? Yeah, especially because they have the work version, like the Ford has the Pro, and they have the RST version now, uh, which Ford has like the Platinum edition, right? I love and that blue, by the way. Oh, I, and we will talk about cars in another video, yeah, right? This is a truck video, so so we'll talk about those cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the electric uh, Equinox and the electric Blazer. So I, I got to tell you, the, the biggest difference I see. Let me zoom in on the work truck. So look at the front fascia, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, very uh, let's call it utilitarian. But if you look at this truck, what do you think of this? This long lit up uh, line. What is that reminiscent of? Is there a truck that that reminds you of? Hmm. Does it have ovals it on does, the sides? Yes. yes, it does. Could it be the Rivian? <laughs> or the Lightning? The Lightning, exactly. Yes. So that bar going across is very reminiscent yes. of the Lightning. Uh, and, but uh, this is in line with their recent styling anyways. You know, uh, most of their, even, you know, crossovers and other vehicles have that similar design. Well, guys, as the sun fades, we shall bid adieu <laughs> to, to Andre and, of course, the new Silverado both work truck and rst yes, so the work truck is available now for fleets uh -huh. only so you have to be a fleet customer and then later this fall the rst goes on sale for anybody who wants to buy it and then they'll have other versions and they show that teaser they show the trail bus off-road version that's coming in about a year maybe more so if you want to know how it drives go to altfl.com and if you want to know how it tows go to altfl.com but uh, a little birdie tells me that at some point we'll be able to actually take this up the ike wouldn't that be cool because we have to, right? Of course we have to. Actually, you and Mr. Truck have to. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao.